So to give you a bit of a, a flavor, I want to make sure that you come away from um, this conversation understanding where there might be a place for you in space and, and a little bit around the excitement and the inclusivity, I think, of, of the way that the sector works. So without too much more ado, I will move on to some of my slides. So to give you a flavor of who I am, um, I'm the point, as it says on the screen, I'm the point of contact for skills and careers development um, across the space sector, working for the UK Space Agency. So my role is very much focused on, on all of the companies across the sector and understanding what their needs are, what they want in terms of the recruits that they're looking for, and, and the training and skills that they're seeking to develop in their own, in their own staff. So it's very much a, an outward facing role. Um, it's, my talk will not be about careers within the space agency. Uh, if you're interested in policy areas and that kind of thing, then I would, would strongly recommend that um, you look on civil service jobs, which is where space agency jobs are advertised. And, and think about that. There are some technical roles, but they, the majority of them are not. So that bit over, let's talk about the fun stuff, if I can make it work. So why, why space? Why right now? Because space is growing. We've got a real strong commitment in this country to to grow the sector we've got a government that's behind making it bigger and supporting smaller and larger smaller and larger companies across the sector the predicted growth is by a further um, a further 30,000 people over the years 2015 to 2030 so that's actually quite quite a lot and we've got we're, we're stepping along the way in a big way very much looking at not only growing our own companies, but also making, um, making it a good place for companies to, to come in and invest here and develop their own, their own organizations within, within our shores. The, the statistics that you're seeing on, the, on this slide at the moment are ones that came out of the Size and Health, which was last done in 2018. We're in the process of, um, of, of, of developing the next set of statistics of taking the temperature of the of the sector um, across across the country at the moment and so next year we'll we'll be publishing the next size and health of, of the sector and hopefully covid won't have impacted it too much but we'll be seeing ourselves moving forward on this ambition of mo moving towards a larger chunk of the global um, space uh, value of space and we see that as being very important space should be recognized as being part of a critical part of our critical national infrastructure not least because just about everything we do every day is would be impacted if we lost the con connectivity that we have to to the satellite um, constellations and communities that we engage with financial services would grind to a halt a lot of everyday stuff relies on signals from satellites. So it's not just, very much not just about building and launching pieces of kit to, to take into space. It's also about using the data from space in ways that every single one of us uses every single day without even being aware of it. So we see that as being a huge part of it. It's also worth bearing in mind that um, when it comes to space, only about 25% um, of, of our activity actually lies in, in the upstream, actually lies in building satellites and sensors and launching them, because 75% of that business is actually in using the data and making it, turning it into products and services. So very much the stuff that, that we see a really broad cohort of people working working on so why now we you may have seen that i think it's two years ago now it seems time time passes so fast 
We've put in place regulations so that we can now launch from our own shores. And there's activity across the country in terms of where we are going to launch into space from. So some of that is, is vertical launch, but obviously there is also work going on at, um, at Spaceport Cornwall, looking at how we might, um, how we will develop horizontal launch facilities as well. Once upon a time, we were only thinking about one. We now have at least three sites that are active and, and building and developing the infrastructure around them to, to, have, that, to have that working. We will be building new, new structures in space. We are collaborating with international partners around the world. You may have seen the, the announcement just recently about the Artemis Accords. And that activity is being supported by all sorts of different people and, um, and companies and organizations and skills diversity, the whole, the whole picture across the country. Increasingly, we're understanding how we can use space to A, monitor and, and understand our own planet uh, and what's going on, but how we can um, influence what's happening here and how we can use that information that we're, we're, de we're developing to take us forward. So commercial opportunities, hugely important, and entrepreneurial skills, the inspiration, the enthusiasm to take that forward, always, always interesting and always worthy of thought. So what does working in space actually mean? So the obvious stuff is the stuff that everybody sees on a daily basis. It's about you know exploring and and using data from space it's about building satellites and sensors designing them using the knowledge of of of, of the way our planet works for example to to model what's what what additional evidence and data do we need so how can we get that information how can we um how can we derive information about um uh, soil moisture what do we use? What, what sensors could we use to get that information? All of those kind of things coming together, being used in all sorts of different ways. That data can help us improve people's lives and help us in the longer term to, to make ourselves all more efficient. We obviously need to get our own experts talking and communicating well with with broad ranges of communities whether that's people who go on to teach and pass on their knowledge or whether it's people who use that knowledge to build good policy and law and that's equally important what i often say to people is you may have done engineering at, at university or whatever you may have got to a point where you think actually that's not what i want to do but you know so much and that knowledge is worth transferring and and passing on on to other people so where could you go? These are just some snapshots of, of, of job titles that you might want to think about considering. If, you, if, if maths is your first love, you might want to go in one direction. There's always research. But the, the, the possibilities are endless. And um, I often say, you tell me what, what floats your boat, and I can probably find you a job description or a job title that will fit what you love doing. And we can find a way to to make that work so definitely always worth um, thinking about think about it from wh where your passion lies because there's no point doing a job for for half a lifetime when it's not something that absolutely inspires you and you want to get out of bed to do it every single morning the um, titles that you see here that have have double asterisks beside them those are all areas where we are now seeing uh, apprenticeship standards in place so that should those be in areas where you're you're interested then you should be able to find an apprenticeship that that you can you can do and and apply for an apprenticeship training route to go in that direction so we've got we've got people working across the country on designing different types of sensors of using those da the data from those different sensors to give us information about um, the planet, the galaxy, and the universe, and seeing how how that that can go forward, and and how we can use those things. So many of those will be used in many of many of the data types that that are described there 
are actually used in in jobs that you might not necessarily think of being space so a meteorologist for example will use atmospheric sensors all the time it's how they forecast the weather but do you think of a meteorologist or a climate scientist as being somebody who works within the space sector i would argue that yes you do but not not necessarily directly within the space sector because they're not kind of building the widget or whatever it is but they are very much a part of our community and and how we see that going forward i would also say i work with a lot of agriculturalists for example where they are looking at different types of information derived from satellite sensors that give them information about soil moisture or dryness and the climate coming in and, and prediction of crop growth. We all need to be able to communicate more broadly and, and see how that data can be utilized more widely. This is the obvious place where people think of, of working in space. It might be building, you know, building rockets, launching rockets, being part of range safety and, and planning how, how um, launch facilities are going to work lot of emphasis going on that of course at the moment particularly with Lockheed Martin's um, move up to Shetland uh, the activities that are going in around the facilities and um, outside Glasgow and of course at Spaceport Cornwall so people beginning to think about all of the infrastructure that goes around um, places like that we're working on technology and infrastructure which will go beyond our planet will that be in in orbit around the moon will that be in in orbit around um, the planet and and what we've already done with the international space station for example but carrying on from there and and designing big and large pieces of kit that will be um, utilized in the future so going back to how we use that data in all sorts of different ways so the I've mentioned where the forecasting and how important it is that prediction that we can we can use to identify the problems that we may we may be suffering what may be coming over the horizon how we can forecast all sorts of different things how we can manage the and and monitor both wildlife and biodiversity but also taking that the next stage further and beginning to implement what we what our growing understanding is of our planet and how we can change things for the future i've got quite a few ex colleagues now who who work within um, disaster response so you might just think that you know well, how does that work well of course satellite communications you know if the if the telephone lines are down that's one way but actually being able to rapidly identify exactly where the problem is where the landslip has been on the road where the the water um, main has been fractured how we can how we can and what we need to get into particular areas can be very important and climate change it goes without saying we couldn't do what we're doing with respect to understanding the the changing effects on our planet without knowing what what's going on from satellites I've talked a bit about the use of, of, of skills and knowledge that you've derived through a space community and how we can take that forward. Whether that's in terms of communicating the knowledge that we're, we're growing in our own evidence bank, banks through all sorts of different media, whether that's teaching young people who we need to encourage to to become engineers and, and scientists in the future or whether that's communicating to policy makers or indeed being one of those policy makers they are all absolutely valid ways of utilizing the skills that you develop in in your direction of travel towards a, a, a career within space and there is a place for every single one of those people so why might you be interested in space? The, the exciting part is that for us, the sector as evidenced by the size and growth um, 
reports over the years has been growing at quite a, a, a strong rate. You could be able to turn around, as I occasionally do, I try not to do it too often, but it could be, it, it can be rocket science. It isn't always, but it can be. And the skills that you develop because you've got that focus on where you want to go in the future can take you absolutely anywhere. We've been talking about this 30,000 new jobs by 2030. There are opportunities all over the sector. It's not as easy as it was at the beginning of the year to be able to identify and, 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 and seek them out. But they will come back and the, and the sector is actively growing. There are lots of companies still trying to recruit, particularly at the mid to senior level where there have been issues recruiting for some time. And the, I think one of the things that's most exciting in this community is that if you've been focused on an aerospace and aviation career, there will be a lot of applicability and transferability of the, the, the knowledge that you've got from those communities into, into this one. It, but, you may, you may not feel that you have the domain experience and I've metaphorically given a gentle slap to, to somebody already today um, for saying, you know, you, just because you don't think you've got it and you're worried about it, try it. I think give it some thought. Um, I think somebody needs to go on to meet. Um, there are great, there are good prospects and they will continue. We have good earning potential across the sector and it is a very international community. So well worth, well worth considering from that perspective. I see a lot of um, companies that have, have upwards of 20 different nationalities among their communities, which is very exciting. It's many sectors in one there is something for just about everybody and whatever, your, whatever the area is that, that particularly interests you. I think the, um, we, can, we can share some of these, but there are lots of opportunities for, for, le for learning, particularly if you're still at university. ESA Academy is a great place to go. Um, placements, the uh, placements in, in different areas, and many of the independent organ, the bigger organisations particularly will will offer some of those. Plus, um, International Space University, which has some really great learning and networking opportunities. Plus, there are free opportunities in terms of MOOCs that you can search out and give you further information. Spacecareers.uk is a good, good website for having a quick look for early career jobs. And so I would recommend that you also think about doing something in that direction. A brief and quick plug for space placements in industry. This is a scheme that we run to join up opportunities offered within companies with um, particularly with students. You have to be a registered student to apply, but you can be studying pretty much anything depending on what you're interested in, there'll probably be a, a, a project for you. We, they're not open yet. They will be open from probably the middle of January and it's up to each individual to keep checking the website to see what comes up because they are advertised on this four week rolling basis and then all the applications are sent off to the company and that one is closed down. So keep your eyes open. We've got our, um, showcase event from this year's pro um, projects on the 25th of November. Why not drop in and see what it was all about? You might find that uh, there was something that you'd like to have done and you could think about doing next year. So that's the website for that and I'll um, share it. If you come and talk to me later at the booth, then very happy to pass that on if you, if, if you don't have access, you won't have access, I guess, to the slides. So that will be worth thinking about. And then the top tips, you know, no question, loads of different skills required. Placements make a huge difference to, to getting a job and explore different routes. There are lots of different ones to do. And um, that is my sna snapshot shot of what you might want to do. And I guess from that perspective, let me open the floor for questions.
Thanks, Cathy. So um, that was really, really interesting. Thank you so much. Um, I'm learning so much about space. <laughs> um, fantastic. Um, everybody, if, uh, know if you want to put some questions in the chat for us, please. I can. If you do have any? I think you can see that, Cathy. I can um, now. Thanks, yeah. Nick. Thanks. So I'm just. Um... Yeah, right. Let me see. Um, to, from my question, it's, I think Erica asks, "What's my recommended way of figuring out what you what you love to do? Go and try different things. Best way, um, go and do placements if you can. Just experiment. Apply for things. Um, you know, you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. I would think that." Um, what I often say about um, particularly the our eight week summer placements is if you get two weeks in and you think, oh God, this is the most boring thing on earth, that's fine. The most important thing you've learned is that that is the area that you don't want to follow and, and you've lost nothing. Stick with it. Grit and determination is, you know, is not hard to, to keep up for only eight weeks. Just get on with it and, um, and, and, take, it, and take it. You're being paid for it. Um, do the best job that you can because you get a reference out of it and then walk away from it that's what it's there for um, if you're looking to take the apprenticeship route the most important thing is that you need to um, find a company that is recruiting for apprentices and then follow that uh, best place to find apprenticeships I, I think you can use find an apprenticeship uh, probably through technicians.org.uk uh, but that would be my route i know for the space engineering apprenticeships that are on offer airbus is one of the they're one of the first adopters of it um, they've just recruited their first cohort of space engineering apprentices and um, they will be ad they will subsequently next year be advertising for their next cohort and others like reaction engines for example will will be recruiting next year as well astrophysics students opportunities for um so you um andrea um asks whether there are opportunities for astrophysics students and can they apply for these apprenticeships it very much depends on the level of the apprenticeship that you're doing. If you have already studied for a degree in astrophysics, a degree is a level six stage of education. You would need to be looking at something that is a level seven. Um, so that might be a, a research type project. In other words, that would take you to a PhD much harder to to go back a level or two so it rather depends what level you're thinking about and adria so um let me leave it at that um apprenticeships are they for graduates or post 18 students it depends uh, on the level of the apprenticeship as i've just said and it will also depend on the criteria that for entry that are relevant to, um, to the individual apprenticeships. You will find that a level four is largely for, uh, level four will be, um, let me think about this. I, I think the criteria is that you don't necessarily have to have done A-levels yet. So, so that changes that. Um, uh, Katie, no, I'm afraid the UK Space Agency does not offer any year-long placements. If you're thinking about SPIN, space placements in industry, the Space Agency, we're not allowed to offer internships. Um, the Space Agency, it, we run space placements in industry. A few of the companies that apply to host an internship will um, make provision for year-long placements so for example the we've got one that's just started with orbex and that will be 10 months to a year um, oxford space systems they like to have them for at least six months depends on the company um, jesus i graduated in aerospace engineering no experience 
what would be your advice for future interviews? Um, you've just got to emphasize the, the skills that you have and, and the work experience that you have done. What are the transferable skills? How are your interpersonal skills? What's your time management like? How can you put things across? Can you explain things easily? Em put the emphasis on that. Um, somebody's asked me a private question. Um, uh, again, about um, moving on from uh, a degree um, and thinking about um, taking an engineering technician apprenticeship, you can, you'll have to try applying. Um, but generally, it's not normal to go from a degree back down to a lower level apprenticeship. In terms of interplanetary missions, um, we generally are not thinking about doing them off our own bat. We will be doing those kind of missions through collaboration with other space agencies. So, for example, through our work with ESA and um, through uh, collaborations with, with NASA, um, Japanese missions, Australian missions. So that's... Woo, lots of questions. Um... Thank you very much, Cathy, for that. Um, so I'd just like to thank the UK Space Agency for taking part today. Um, do go and visit all of the other resources that they have on demand on their exhibitor profile. But thank you all very much for attending. And thanks, thanks again to Cathy. Thanks. Bye bye.